Ocarina of Time is pretty good. Dare I say, fairly important. Just based on the amount of discussion it generates online in the year of our Lord 2023, considering it came out in 1998 when graphics looked like this, and Link's schnoz was so big it could take out your eye if you went in to like, kiss him. I don't know, I'm just putting a hypothetical scenario there. And there are many ways to play this game. On the original N64 hardware if you have it, which is where I originally played it. On the GameCube if you pre-ordered Wind Waker, where you got the snazzy Master Quest as well. On the Wii U Virtual Console, which no longer exists, and I'm told the Wii U was a Nintendo console. Okay, that's news to me. On the 3DS there's a remastered game with improved graphics, 3D and gyroscopic controls, but with more downsides than the original release. What's with this lighting? Or more recently, on the Switch Online Pass, if you want to drop $50 a month into Shiggy's pocket. Or you can emulate it on the PC, which works a treat. Apparently, so I've been told. Well ladies and gentlemen, there's another way. A way that keeps the essence of the original release, works in the upgrades of the 3DS version, and even updates the performance of the game to modern standards so as not to be a pain on your eyeballs. I'm talking HD, 4K, widescreen, 60fps. I mean, are you for real? Bitch, are you for real? And retaining the original darkness and lighting settings of the original, no, I won't stop shitting on the 3DS remake, thank you very much. All of this and available on the best system of all, the personal computer. So let me detail to you the path to follow to play the best version of the best game of all time. Okay, let's get into this tutorial. To play the best version of Ocarina of Time out there, step one is to... That's right, it's time. Get outside, steal a car, break a window, do a line of drugs, or sell phrasing flour if you don't want to cave into peer pressure. And then go to Google and type, Dearest Sir and Madame, I require your earliest convenience, a digitized copy of Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64. I require it to be either the Ocarina of Time PAL GameCube game, or the Ocarina of Time Debug PAL GameCube game without the Master Quest, or the Ocarina of Time Debug PAL GameCube Master Quest, thus resulting in the Master Quest dungeons. It must be one of thou versions, otherwise thou checksums do not match, resulting in an error later. Once Google has kindly retrieved your requested illegal content, we then must... This is the easy part, just get it from Discord. Navigate to the download and... Click on the link of your computer's operating system. Double click on the EXE on Windows, or the app image on Linux, or app on Mac. Then select the supported ROM that Google provided you. A notification saying processing OTR pops up and it will take about five minutes, so don't worry. Go make yourself a coffee. When it's done, on any OS, it will generate a file called oot.otr. Make sure that this file is in the same one as the exe or app image or app, if not already. Then click the exe app image or app to play the game. You can even play it on the Wii U and the Switch. I'm not going to go into it because it's beyond my pay grade of zero dollars but that is immensely cool and I wanted to at least mention it. Now, let's talk about modern luxuries. Once you're in, hit F10 to make it full screen, or Alt Enter if you're using DirectX like I am. You can save and load states with F5 and F7, change save state slot with F6, although it's a bit odd that F6 cycles through states rather than selecting the save states with the number keys. This puts it behind current emulators and I'm hopeful that this improves in future versions. Control R resets the game, and if you hit F1, a menu appears that hides some really cool options. Audio is limited, but you can change the master volume or specific audio levels like the music, the sound effects, or the classic Zelda item get fanfare individually. In controller, there's a preset keyboard controls, which if you don't like, you can change in a text file. Not super convenient, but with any modern controller, you can just plug in and play. I use an Xbox 360 controller and it just worked. It even supports gyro controls if your controller does. And rumble is now included and adjustable, which most controllers now support anyway. I would select all D-pad options so D-pads can be used in game menus, shop menus, and on the ocarina. And having the D-pad as usable for equipping items gives you four more slots to add items. That's even less menu management. In enhancements, also add tunics and boots as equipable C button items. So that's the water temple solved. In graphics, you can change the internal resolution and texture filtering. The Nintendo 64 had infamously used a lot of texture smoothing. But here, turning that off makes it look like a PS1 game. Jitterfix is related to frame interpolation, which is used to reach 60 frames per second and beyond. So set this to your interpolation FPS setting, say 60 FPS, and this will introduce a short delay to your input lag to prevent animations from jittering, which is more likely on older systems with less buff CPUs and GPUs. And also don't go to the minimum FPS setting, it currently crashes when you do. It has English, German and French languages, which you can change in real time, which is... Merci beaucoup. 
Now in the enhancements menu is probably the meat and potatoes of the port. If you've played Ocarina of Time before, which you probably have, bump up the tech speed to at least three times. You can also speed up King Zora's Ass Shuffle. Not sure why you want to though. Reduce Big Oran Sword Forge Time because it's just ding dang waiting. And increase climbing speed because why not? You can speed up many animations like block pushing which was slow in the OG game. Kick open any chest to do things faster. Don't freeze when you get a Skull Teller token. Prevent Navi from popping up to tell you how doors work. Yes please. Switch the responses for the owl so they actually make sense. Majora's Mask Hood gives Link a speed boost when wearing the bunny mask like in Majora's Mask. Giving that mask extra utility. There's also a difficulty modifier to make the game a bit harder. You can get increased damage from enemies, from falling, or from jumping into bottomless pits. No random or heart drops as an extra hardcore challenge. And you can also affect the strength of potions, and even adjust the fishing difficulty. You can reduce the menu clutter too. Minimal UI makes things a little bit more streamlined, but personally it doesn't quite have the same impact as the minimal UI on Breath of the Wild. You can mute the HP alarm if you find it annoying, and mute Novi as well because I still know how doors work. The visual stone of agony you can use if your controller doesn't rumble for some reason. Assignable tunics and boots gives the upgrade that the 3DS games provided. The cow and Link's house that you win if you beat Malin's obstacle course disappears in adult, so you can fix that with this option. You can better detect guards when you see the castle sneaking section. Make the menu prettier with time changing during the menu. Have Skulltala messages tell you the number of tokens that you currently have. And pull the grave at any time, even in the day, as a child. In graphics you can have the Nintendo 64 mode, which sets everything to N64 specs. 240p, 20fps, and it looks not at all like I remember, but exactly what it looked like back then. Animate Link in Pause menu turns Link from a static pose to an animation and is such a small touch that modernizes the game to no end. 3D items also does this. Previously there were 2D sprites that turned 3D as Link picked them up. Now there are 3D objects in the world. Disable the black bar letterboxes while you're at it. Dynamic wallet icon illustrates your wallet size by rupee color, like future Zeldas do. And you can always show dungeon entrances on the minimap. Select all fixes as they are all current bugs on the Nintendo 64 game. And under restoration, turn on red gain blood. That's the only necessary one here. Now, frame interpolation. Ocarina of Time runs natively at 20 frames per second. But using AI, the ship can add interpolated frames in between to smooth out most animations. Click the batch refresh rate to set it to your monitor's refresh rate. But anything higher you can't see and is a waste of computational resources. And setting it to the minimum turns it off. 60fps I think looks way better. Here's a side by side comparison. However some things don't get an increase in fps, such as the horses in the opening scene or Link sword swing. And these do stick out compared to the buttery smooth animation of everything else. It also messes with cutscenes. I noticed the cutscene with the three goddesses that had impacted lighting, glitchy models and things didn't play correctly. Okay, correction, this has been fixed in the latest version, version 4. Um, the previous footage came from the first version, so there you go. But during gameplay, the 60fps is so worth it. Disable level of distance means that you can turn off the logic that switches models to lower poly versions. I mean, it's 2022, our computers can now handle this. Similarly, turn off the fog, including the extra fog in the Kikiri Forest. Skip text with a B button so it operates like modern games. And another favourite, use the second analogue stick on modern controllers to control the camera freely. So modern. It does tend to reveal the space beyond the world, and it stops you rotating Link in the new animated menu, but that's no biggie. And it also takes out those three buttons for your items, so your mileage may vary as you might want it on or not. But to me it makes it feel more like Breath of the Wild, so I have it on. Under cosmetics you can change Navi's colour as well as your tunic's colour easily. You can even change mid cutscene. And you can modify the HUD size and position here as well. If you use the C buttons for the free camera, you can't assign anything to the C buttons anymore, so you can do like me, remove those C buttons from the HUD, and shift the D panel up to its place. And switch between N64, GameCube, and a custom colour combination for the A and B buttons. Now in cheats you can get infinite money, health, ammo, magic, and love from your dad. Oh sorry, Nehru. Love from Nehru, who's not your dad. You can no clip through geometry, climb on everything like Breath of the Wild, Moon jump with the L button to peel back the curtains of the game's careful smoking mirrors. Super Tunic gives you the benefit of all tunics in one. Easy Infinite Sword Glitch is an easy way to do the legendary N64 glitch. You can use items anywhere, even in shops. This is a stick up by the way. And there is freeze time, but I'm not sure what that does. And in developer tools you can enter debug mode and go to whatever map you want. Including some cool developer rooms to test animations and physics. And of course there is the save editor. Here you can change your name, number of hearts or any stat associated with your save. Money, money, money. Or any item in your inventory, gold skull tullers, equipment, quest status, 
Oh, the Temple of Time door is closed. Adventuring, adventuring, and done. As well as Link's current age and equipment. There's also a collision viewer slash seizure model, but if you add as a decal, it gives you a cool insight into the hitboxes and collision. And a console where you can spawn in whatever you'd like. Type help into the console to see your options, but you can make Link giant or invisible, or turn him into paper, turn on rain, make him minish, or most importantly, spawn whatever you'd like. Hello there. In the description is a link to all of the actors in the game and their associated number, so you can spawn in whichever you like. You can even spawn the Arwing using the code below from Star Fox 64 that was used to test Z targeting. And finally, there is a randomizer option, and there's tons of options here. You can change what areas of the map are open, medallion count, and where the game shuffles rewards. And even if you wanted to shuffle entrances as an extra mindfuck, before generating a seed for that randomized playthrough. Do this on the menu and it will generate a code using item icons and select a new file and then select randomized game. Otherwise it won't be randomized. And of course, give Link a mature name. Then when you're playing a randomized game or a regular game, you can visually see your equipment with a built-in item tracker. Ship of Harkinin is so feature rich it is just crazy. And it was just released too. Now this is an open access project. You too could develop code and contribute to the ship on GitHub. Not me though, any code that I'd make would probably break the whole thing. But what that means is that more is on the way, such as ray tracing like in Render 96 for Super Mario 64 project. Mod support is huge, meaning mods are going to explode like everything within Ocarina of Time. High resolution texture packs can be readily imported, facilitating projects like Ultra Creed's HD texture pack. It is unequivocally the best way to play Ocarina of Time today. And the reason is you have all the options available to you. Want to play it like back in the day? Boom, you have a setting for that. Want to remix the game for something fresh? Boom, randomizer. Are you a Zelda pro wanting a hardcore experience? Boom, modify the difficulty. And for me, it has sanded off all the edges I felt going back to this 25 year old game. With faster text speed, skippable text, a free camera, 3D objects, an animated link in the menus, and an integrated rumble right from the opening gate. Hyrule Gate specifically in Link's Dream at the beginning of the game. On top of the improved visuals, it just feels like a modern game again. Now you might be asking yourself the question, is this shit legal? Well, the ship is above board, as far as I can tell. You see, Ocarina of Time was fully decompiled in November 2021. This means we converted the machine beep boop code that the Nintendo 64 understands to human legible code. What the ship of Harkinian does is take that code and recompile it to make a port that runs natively on the PC. That's right, this is not an emulator. The PC does not have to burn excess resources translating every frame between Nintendo 64's rando language to its own. But the ship of Harkinian can be thought legally like an emulator, say Project 64, in that the emulator itself is not illegal because it does not contain software owned by Nintendo. It is simply used to play ROMs which you might have obtained legally. Similarly, Ship of Harkinian provides no compiled code from the original game. It decompiles the Ocarina of Time ROM you provide, making you the criminal, so it basically deconstructs the game and builds it up into something magical. But the Ship of Harkinian itself does not contain any of Nintendo's compiled code and hence is not owned by Ninty. Hence they are not infringing on Nintendo's copyright. Now I ain't a lawyer, but the fact that Ninty hasn't struck them down with a DMCA yet is a good sign. They will certainly slap down a DMCA takedown if their copyrighted code is being used, like in the case of AM2R, and yet they have not legally pursued emulators like Project 64 that have been around in the grey area for a long time. So this gives me hope that legal shenanigans and bullshittery against the Harbour Masters will be tricky for Nintendo and possibly not a winning case. This port has been in development for over two years and the developers themselves have not asked for any money. Such dedication I think is a testament to how great Ocarina of Time was, and thanks to projects like this, still is. I can't thank enough the Harbour Masters of the Ship of Harkinian, especially Curry as the lead programmer, at doing such a fantastic job bringing back a game that I and many others love out of sheer passion, so thank you all so much and I'll see you all in Hyrule Field. And you know what, this entire video is outdated. In the latest version, things have been shifted around slightly, but it's mostly the same. What's really nice is they've got enhancement presets now, so you can select specific quality of life uh, settings that you might like, but it just basically changes all the internal settings within here. I like to I like to just delve in and change exactly what I like, but that's a nice little cool little option. If you want some quality of life features, but you don't want to affect the gameplay, items, instant put away. You can return the boomerang instantly to his hand. Okay, okay, so that stops it from getting a wrong note. Cool, mask slot. Okay, that's interesting. There's, you can now always win the Goron pot and always win Dampe. Dampe was a particularly annoying one, so that's nice. 
The Sable Crit Wiggle. I don't particularly remember that. Sunlight Arrows can activate Sun Switches. Well, the Light Arrows. Allow Ice Arrows to melt Red Ice. Yep, now Block Pushing Speed is an option like this. Animated Link in Pause Menu. Yes, of course. Yes, please. That's all the same. The fixes are pretty much the same. You can prevent the War Gerudo Warrior's clothing changing when Link changes his. Because previously, for some unknown reason, it was linked to Link's costume. Costume. His tunic color. Power Crouch Stab. Yeah, that was particularly high. And save with Megaton. Restoration is pretty much the same. Bomb Choose Out of Bounds. Save with LID. Cheats. Everything's pretty there. Except now opponent's boost is now maximum. Time Sync. So the game is synced with the real world time. Ocarina Time Beta Quest, use a shield with two-handed weapons, Fireproof Deku Shield was already there. Yeah, that was it. I mean, I think I think with, they're continually updating this. The gameplay is, is just as brilliant as the first version. Now that the cutscenes are fixed, like, it's genuinely the definitive version. 